Okay, so in this one, we're looking at how to preview or how to view somebody else's profile instead of our own. Okay, so these uh, friends over here are supposed to be clickable, clickable so that we can click to another profile. Okay, now the way uh, this thing works is that we have one profile.php page. Okay, so it's the same page that displays all profiles, yours and others. However, we are going to uh, tell PHP who, whose information to display here. So it's the same page, but it's going to have different information depending on the profile that we are viewing. So how exactly will it know which user's information to show? is what we're about to learn right now. Okay, so if you remember uh, correctly, this section right here, uh, this thing here is contained in the users.php uh, file. So if I go to my folder here and go to user.php, if I open this, as you can see the title friends, and uh, this is pretty much uh, this right here. So in, as you can see here, we we are only checking for uh, the placeholders, the male and the female, just like we were doing for our posts. And we changed that. So we're going to do exactly the same thing here as well by going to our post.php here where we checked if the user has a profile image and we use that instead so we're going to do exactly the same thing copy and go to user.php down here and paste that if statement okay well and good so we are checking if the file exists now this uh, raw user is the variable that contains the information for the current uh, profile and not the current friend that is here. What contains that is this friend row right here. So we're going to copy that and replace the row user with row friend. Control D to select both of them and then paste. All right, so something like that. And let's check it out if anything has changed. Now, since both of these don't have a profile image assigned to them, this is why nothing has actually changed but rest assured it's actually working now the next thing to do is to make this section clickable and that's by adding an a tag so we're going to make the whole thing clickable the image and the name of this user so we'll go down here and put an a tag of course and then the closing a tag will cut it from there and oh sorry and paste it over there so that now this entire section is now clickable so if we refresh we're going to see that the mouse actually changes and we can click on this but we are brought back to the same page so we have to tell it where to go and it has to go to the profile.php page okay now the thing is this is the profile.php page so if we click, we get exactly the same result. Now, this is where it gets interesting because we have to tell uh, PHP which user's information to load when we click here. And so how do we do that? We do that using what is called a query string. Okay, so a query string is part of the URL here, all right? So let me explain a little bit. Let me copy, uh, I think I can use a new document. Let me create a new document here for demonstration purposes. Now let's imagine we have uh, a, uh, a website, www.facebook.com, right? And then you have accessed a particular page called profile.php, okay, so far. This is exactly what we have over here. Now, if you go to any website, you will notice that there's a, uh, a bunch of text after this part right there. 
Now the thing is, if uh, let me go to my uh, my profile.php. If I add some text at the end of this, like this, just some random text and hit OK, I'm going to get this error which will say object not found because the browser can't actually determine what this is. It can't find this file right here. However, if I do something without changing this text, just go to the PHP, just at the end of the PHP and put a question mark right there and hit enter, you will notice that my page actually loads. Okay? I haven't changed anything here. I've just added a question mark there. So what exactly is going on? Now, in every uh, URL, as soon as you see a question mark there, it means everything after the question mark is what is called a query string. So for example, that is a query string. Now a query string is data that you pass on to the page to give it a bit of context on what you want exactly shown on that page. So this is how we transfer information from one page to the next. So here, the way we're going to tell uh, PHP which profile to, to show is by adding a query string with the information of exactly which profile we want to view. Okay, now how do you access the information up there? You do that using what is called the get super global. Now, what is a super global? First of all, a global is a variable. So let me go back to, let's say, profile.php or one of these classes. Now, a global variable is a variable that is accessible anywhere on that page. So for example, I might have a function right here. I may have something like function uh, A, B, C, D or A, B, C, D, something like this. Okay. Now what happens is uh, if I have a variable over here, I have a variable right there. It might not be accessi ac accessible in this function. Or for example, I create a, uh, let's say I have A is equal to zero over here. And then I have inside this function, I say A is equal to five. Now what's happening here is that this A and this A are very different. This A is only accessible inside this function. And this A is only accessible outside this function. Okay, that's what scope uh, entails. So the scope of this particular variable is outside this function. And the, uh, the scope of this variable is inside this function. Once I exit this function, this A and that A is different. So if, for example, here, what I've done, I've said a is equal to zero. And then inside this function, I say a is equal to five. If I check what a is right here, I say echo a. What do you think I'm going to have? I'm going to have a is equal to zero because this a that was changed in here is not the same a that was changed over there. And the a that I'm echoing here is not this a, but that a. So it gets a little bit confusing, but that's how it is. So once you declare a variable outside the function, it's for outside the function. Once you declare one inside the function, then it's inside the function. Now, if you want to be able to change this A from inside this function, you have to pass it as a variable over here, like so. So it becomes an argument inside there. So this A will be that, so it's going to pass in, it's going to be passed inside the function, changed, and then if I echo it out, it's going to be equal to five. Now, this is one way of doing it. The other way is to declare it as a global and say global A, like so. So the moment I add global A, what I'm saying is, each time I reference A, I'm talking about the one that's outside of this function. Okay, hopefully that's actually making sense. So this now becomes a global variable inside here. Now, there are super global variables. Now those super global variables cannot be declared by you, but they come with PHP, okay? 
Now, what a super global variable means is that it's accessible in your entire project, which means if I change the value here of that variable in profile.php, the value will be changed also in user.php. So a super global variable is accessible to the entire project. Any page can access that super global variable. So there are a few that you have to keep in mind. The first one I think we've already used when signing up a user, it's called the post super global variable, like this one. So also super global variables have a dollar sign and underscore like so. Okay, so these are some of them. There's post, there's session, there's server, these files all these are super global variables or there's also cookie like so which we'll learn uh, in future videos and then there is also uh, which we want to use right now is get like so okay so let me explain what the get super global is all about so if we go to profile.php here. As you can see, I've added a query string at the end because of that question mark. So to access that query string, we're going to use the get variable. So what I will do is uh, up here, I'm going to say print readable so that we can see what's inside the get variable. Now the get variable is always accessible anywhere in your project. So the moment I do that, it's going to show me what's inside the get variable. There we go. Now for us to see it better, I'm going to add some pre-tags as usual, like so. That's opening, and then I'll have a closing pre-tag over here. And then I am going to refresh that again. So as you have seen, an array was created with a get variable, which got this value here and created uh, a memory location named that right there, but the location has no value. So what we could do to make the get variable more useful is to do this. <coughs> Excuse me. I could say something like uh, name is equal to my or some name. Okay, I didn't leave a space there. I could put an underscore like that. And then I'm going to copy this name is equal to some name and put it at the end of immediately after the question mark and hit enter. And now what you notice here is that an array was created in the get variable with a location in memory called name and then it's equal to some name. That's exactly what I wrote here. Now I can add more than one memory location by putting the and at the end here. I'm going to say and like so id is equal to one two three four like that okay oh sorry almost saving that one uh, reflex so let me go back here and copy that entire query string and paste it at the top here okay so i have name is equal to that id is equal to that so i'm simply creating some data over here that i can send to another page using the get variable okay so in this case for example in our case let's go practical now let me cancel so you can put as many as you want I can put an and here and put something else and you is equal to whatever that is it doesn't matter okay so let me close that now if we go back to our example here profile.php so we are telling uh, this we're setting a link to profile.php but we just don't want to go to profile.php we want to give some extra information here in the get variable so that our program can know which profile to actually access so of course we're going to put our question mark at the end and then we're going to say something like id is equal to and then we can put an id over there to tell it that on this one show us the profile with this id however we won't know what id since this is looped every uh, every profile here is using the same file to access uh, the content 
right here. So we can't put an actual number there. So what we want to do is put a variable. So let's echo something. We're going to say PHP. So we're adding PHP tags here because this is HTML. And so we can simply echo something right there. So we'll have to add the PHP tags and then we must add the word echo. Otherwise we'll get nothing. So the friend row right here. Now, if I go to my uh, uh, database, let me reduce the zoom. There is ID here, but there's also user ID. So we're going to use the user ID to identify what profile we want to see. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to tell it to echo this, but user ID like so. And then I'm going to put my semicolon and then close that like so. So if I don't put echo here, I get nothing. So echo must be there. And so let's go back and see what we get. So if I refresh my page this time, if I hover my mouse over this, now look at the bottom uh, corner, the bottom left corner of your browser, and it's going to show you the link that you are going to. So if I hover on this one, you see that the ID starts with 922. And if I go down here, my ID starts with 810, which means these are different profiles. So if I click on this one, I get a nice query string over there. This is what we get at the top. So you see, we have ID is equal to that. Okay. Now contrast that if I click on Mary Piri here, and then I'm going to get ID is equal to that. So what PHP can simply do is get this variable, look up into the database, who has, uh, and check which user has this ID and retrieve that user and then display that information here. So I hope that process is clear, uh, how we use our get variables. All right, so in the interest of keeping my videos short, I'm going to move over to the next video where we actually put this into practice and see some different data here, depending on the profile that we have clicked. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.